a huge welcome, um, everyone, uh, to today's um, Rare Race Equality Matters Safe Space Workshop. If you're here for somebody else, uh, please do stay because um, you'll get uh, a good guidance and learning today. Um, we're delighted to share one of our key solutions, and you individually are the change makers. You know, it's people like yourselves that are going to create the change that we want to see and feel. So thank you for your precious and valuable time this afternoon. Uh, for those that may not know me, I'm Javid Thomas, co-founder of Race Equality Matters, and along with the fantastic Rajtul Siani of Green Park, a global talent advisory firm. Uh, also, um, I'm also the co-founder of The Collaboratory, which creates collaborations to tackle societal issues that matter the most. I'm delighted to say today we're joined by our project manager, Donna Robertson, uh, and we have the rest of the Race Quality Matters team behind the scenes. Um, and we're also joined um, today by a fantastic guest speaker and trailblazer, Alexandra uh, Maria, uh, who we'll introduce a bit later, but it's fantastic he's here. Um, he's um, living proof of running safe space and can explain the difference it's made. Next slide, please. So um, to, uh, um, quick agenda um, go through, there will be polls. Uh, Donna will do a top line walk through the various key steps in the how to do it right guide. There will be um, hopefully two collaborative discussion groups so you can uh, network and get top tips from each other. Uh, we'll hear from Alex, who I mentioned, um, and we need your advice on one of our solutions later on. And if we have time, we'll try and squeeze some Q&As in uh, towards the end uh, and tell you what else is in the, uh, diary, uh, the pipeline for race equality matters. So in today's session, we're going to cover why safe space solution is needed and some key steps uh, from the how to do it right guide. So uh, and this was co-created by people with lived experience to see how to run a safe space um, impactfully. To give you a bit of background, Race Equality Matters is a not-for-profit and it aims to be a catalyst to move organisations and individuals from conversations to meaningful action that has impact. It's, it's not about just doing the action, it's having impact. As you may hopefully know, we co-create all our concepts and solutions in collaboration with those with lived experience. The key is to help organizations make the impacts, as I said earlier, we want to see and indeed feel. The need is clear, and we've had tens of thousands of people attend our workshops and events in a little over 18 months. Our solutions, as you can see there, include Race Equality Week, a week annually, where we galvanize thousands of organizations and millions of employees to take part in meaningful activity that drives race equality. It's the first working Monday of every February, so you can have that in your diary for perpetuity. Tea Break, an organization-wide theme discussion, which enables you to hear the honest voice and feelings of your colleagues to take action. It was co-created with Network Rail's Culture Fusion, uh, their Cultural Fusion Network. Um, big Promise, uh, which is uh, about turning words into action. In a nutshell, colleagues from across the organization all get involved. Each one chooses a big promise from a list of seven magnificent promises. Promote it, keep it. So imagine in your organization the impact if all your colleagues made one of these promises. And these have been all selected by those with lived experience of race inequality in the workplace. Uh, my name is, uh, which we'll talk about a bit later on. Uh, and of course, the reason we're here today is safe space. We also have two new initiatives in the pipeline that we will share later on. Next slide, please. All of this, it's important to say, is not possible without the support of vital partners and funders. So a big thank you to them, especially Green Park and our lifetime visionary partners, BT, and our founding partners, Autotrader, Edelman, Data Market Association, and HS2. Their support means you can access all these resources and workshops for free, so there's no barrier to um to be included but we are a not-for-profit and indeed need further funding so if your organization would like to get involved donation uh, or marketing opportunities please do let us know next slide a quick bit of housekeeping we'll be recording the event uh, for you to access later along with the slides uh, so we will be sharing the slides um, if you have any questions along the way please do put them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them uh, your sound will be auto disabled until the discussion groups, uh, but we'll let you know. Please uh, do tweet uh, during and after the event. It's really important that we can let more people know about this because hopefully if you're inspired by the event, let's let others know about it. Um, next slide, please. So as we know, we like to get what I call a state of the nation. It'd be really good if you could just quickly uh, take part in this poll and we'll just share some of the key results with you. If we can launch the poll, please. Thank you all for your input. As we can see, a great mix of people here today. Two thirds 
identify as ethnic minority or appropriate equivalent and a third as an ally, it's important that we tackle this issue of race inequality united. So fantastic to see the diverse mix attending today. The second question, do you have the power and authority to make things happen regarding race? 4% said no and 16% not really. 55% uh, occasionally and 25% said yes. I guess with the majority in the occasionally, I guess it depends how significant or trivial the issues individuals can make decisions on. This is the first time we've done this one, so it'd be great to see how things progress over the next few months and indeed years. As we can see, um, nearly 90% have not downloaded a safe space workbook yet. We absolutely encourage you to do so. And as Donna will go through the guide, um, that should encourage you to look at it. And our trailblazer, Alex, will also explain the difference it made for him. Well done to the fantastic 4% gold stars to you who have downloaded and read it. As we can see, um, the majority should I say 92% have not been to a safe space workshop before and I saw in the comments that the 8% that have are looking for a refresher uh, I guess to help inspire give them the confidence to run safe space. Question five do you feel your leaders and managers are committed to tackling race inequality? So 58% said yes overall it's been usually around the 60-65% mark so this is not far off it and it's an increase from a couple of years ago when it's close to about 20%. However, it seems to be flatlining at the moment. We can't get it towards a 70% or plus. But still a positive number that we can work from. This is really helping us see progress, you know, year on year or month on month. As we can see, only 34% think their organisations are tackling race equality fairly well or really well. The rest is... 65% so two-thirds feel between a little not enough and not at all so there's a gap from leaders and managers committed to tackling race inequality to actually making an impact which is the key reason why race equality matters exists to create solutions that help make a meaningful impact question seven how is your organization addressing race inequality so it's 90% just talks does very little or nothing so that's one in five 56%, so about half, talks and does a little bit of action. And 25% focus on action, not just words. So that's the key number we need to get to. So one in four, which is positive. So let's see if we can keep this going month on month. Do you feel your leaders and managers are comfortable talking about race? Interestingly, is 27% comfortable or very comfortable, which is more or less the average every event we do. So again, a long way to go to get organisations, leaders and managed to talk about race or come to talk about race and we think this is one of the real barriers. But Safe Space will enable this to be clearly addressed. The audience have joined today's event um, to learn, 67%, get ideas, 74% and be inspired, 55% and then a number of other key reasons as well. So thank you for sharing that. And it lets us know content and format we put into our events to provide you what you need. And the final one, have you implemented any of the Race Equality Matters other solutions? So 9% tea break, and we know that's growing month on month. 5% the big promise, and my name is 23%, and we'll be talking more about that later. Okay, so what is safe space? Um, I think the best way to, um, if we just go straight into the video, please, Claire, actually, um, and hopefully that explains it to everyone. Race Equality Matters provides organisations with the tools, resources and skills to implement them. Race Equality Matters 
is not a talking shop. We inspire change by creating solutions and working with organisations to implement them. One of those solutions is Safe Space. Safe Space is a two hour facilitated dialogue between three to five senior leaders or exco and up to 10 ethnic minority colleagues. Safe Space will provide a protected environment to enable brave conversations in order to generate action, remain focused and achieve a meaningful outcome driven by the people it matters to. Safe Space will help you achieve facilitated meaningful dialogue between ethnic minority employees and their senior leaders who must be willing to make a commitment and take action to address some of the key issues raised. Safe Space is split into three distinct parts. One, inform and educate. Two, understand the issues. And three, take action. It is more than just a conversation. We also run Safe Space workshops and have a how to do it right guide which focuses on finding the right people to participate and create a safe and constructive environment for these conversations to take place. This guide consists of four key phases and 11 steps with top tips and checklists to assist as well as a focus on well-being. This guide will enable brave conversations, facilitate uncomfortable discussions and drive meaningful change. Thank you. Um, apologize for um, the dramatic music with some people, but that's to make sure no one get, does the afternoon snooze. It's to keep you awake. So um, uh, thank you for watching that. And we will provide access to that video if that helps you um, back in your workplaces um, after the event. Um, so we're going to walk through the guide um, um, with you. Um, and it's crazy because organizations were asking us for help in understanding how to successfully run a safe space. Because um, we know organizations run their own version of it and it doesn't always work so we try to pull together all the best bits it's based on workshops and research that race equality matters ran in collaboration with those with lived experience from across the country it's been created to assist um, the safe space project lead and the potential working group there are two main points to note first it may sound obvious but it is a guide so every organization is different and we do expect you to adapt the steps as you need to fit your organization, so it's a guide. Um, secondly, there is one mandatory requirement and that is to have a facilitator in the, in the room when you run your safe space, that's absolutely crucial. And also to focus on keeping your colleagues safe. Um, this is one reason why we collaborated with Mental Health First Aid England for their expertise and we'll explain that when Donna goes through, through the guide. In, next slide please. In the guide, we've broken each step down to different sections. Um, the driving force, this identifies who is responsible for that step and it's different people uh, why the step is needed we then draw out key points and actions for each step we've included helpful features such as ideas and what else you could do during that step links to further resources and support uh, and there are well-being alerts to remind you when it's critical to check in with colleagues uh, there is a checklist at the end of each step to summarize core actions of each step. So it's really sort of like a sort of, sort of step by step guide within each step. So before I hand you over to Donna, um, uh, what I'd like to do is um, firstly a warm welcome and in introduce you to Alexandra uh, Maria. Um, Alex is managing consultant uh, EDI at the Clear Company. 
He's passionate about diversity and inclusion and recently changed career and joined the Clear Company to support and challenge organizations to advance their EDI strategies. In his previous role at in Inmasat, Alex created their first multicultural employee network, leading a team of seven volunteers, and he implemented Safe Space, which, is drive, which drove impactful and lasting change. So Alex, if you can unmute yourself, please. Thank you. Um, so first question, um, you successfully implemented Safe Space but with so many things you could do to address race inequality, why did you decide to uh, choose Safe Space? Uh, hi, everyone, and, and thank you for you know, having me, uh, Jav Javed, Donna, and, and the team. Uh, why, so why we decided to implement Safe Space? The number one reason was we, we wanted to amplify the voices of the network members. That was one of the main reasons. And we thought, how do we also amplify those voices, but ensure they can reach the top of the organization. And Safe Space was one way to do that. We also wanted our executives to be more aware of some of the challenges uh, their colleagues might be going through day to day, you know, at work or you know, in their just day to day life. Um, and again, Safe Space was the avenue uh, to, to do that. And we wanted to also start making the executive more comfortable about having conversation around race and ethnicity. It, it still felt at the time uh, it was a taboo subject. Mm. So we really wanted to, to make a shift in this space and uh, encourage them to have those uh, conversations with, you know, with colleagues and almost normalize those, uh, those conversations. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and that, Alex summed up is the reason why it was created. Um, we're going to walk everyone through um, the, the Safe Space Guide. So how valuable did you find the guide? You know, extremely, extremely valuable. I think without the guide, uh, it will have been a challenge to uh, launch the initiative because it really gave us a plan to follow. It gave us some structure uh, to, uh, uh, to, to put together the, the initiative. And then you mentioned it earlier, we really used it as a guide, but we adapted it to uh, in Marsat cultures and how we wanted to run the events. So why it was also helpful is to articulate how we were going to put the initiative together to our sponsors, to the HR team. So when we presented the idea and they saw the approach we were, we were taking, it gave them confidence. We were prepared to, to run, you know, run the event. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so we'll come back to um, Alex. Um, what I'll now do is introduce you to Donna, Project Manager of Race Equality Matters, who will walk through the first seven steps. Um, over to Donna. Fabulous. Okay, Thank you, Javid. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm going to take you through a very top line walkthrough, and we're going to start our journey at step one and phase one. And this is all about making safe space safe. Um, you need to assure the psychological safety and well-being of the participants. Uh, participants may feel vulnerable and concerned about negative repercussions in terms of their career and mental health or how they might be judged or perceived. And our workshops have highlighted that one of the key concerns ethnic minority employees have about taking part is the risk of negative repercussions on their work relationships and careers. So you might want to consult with them and ask them what concerns they have and what would make them feel safe. And we recommend that you create a meaningful psychological safety statement signed by the board as this endorsement will encourage people to be honest and you'll find an example of this in the workbook uh, this along with the whole of safe space was de developed in collaboration with collaboration with mental health first aid england and it's a really great resource so please do take some time to download it and go through it Give some thought to meeting rules and behaviours. Use the Chatham House rule, which means participants are free to use the information received, but they're not allowed to identify or affiliate anything to any of the, partic to any of the participants. Um, talking about race equality issues can be really draining and can take a toll on mental health, and it can also re-traumatise or trigger emotions. So ensure that participants are empowered to ask for support and check in with them before, during and after the safe space session. Also, please do provide support or signpost them to further sources of support. And again, you'll find uh, a list of um, some, uh, some organizations in the resource pack uh, on the website. 
Next slide, please. So the next um, phase of our journey is all about finding the right people. And the first step is to find a project lead, a change maker, identify someone that's going to bring energy, focus and continuity to the initiative. Look for passion, people skills, resourcefulness, someone trusted and respected who's well connected and persistent. Brief them on safe space so they've got the right information to understand the scope of the role and then get their agreement to be the lead and ask them what else they might need support wise. Next slide, please. So we're now at step three, which is about finding your senior sponsor. Research has found that having a senior endorsement is the driver for success when it comes to diversity and inclusion. They'll champion safe space and help you engage with the board and access resources if needed. So we recommend you approach senior leaders who have influence and authority, as well as a passion for race equality and driving change. Explain what safe space is, its benefits, why senior leadership involvement is critical and what's expected of them. And again, there's a template in the guide to help you, uh, help you do this. The next slide. So at step four, we recommend that you consult with colleagues. And this is a great way to build your case for safe space and also to get insight into the type of questions to ask during the session. They'll help you identify key issues that could be addressed. And they can also help you promote awareness of the initiative internally. So think about the questions you'll ask them, how you'll reach them, could be through your race networks or through surveys, and make sure that you allocate enough time to gather the information and also sign post them to additional support if necessary. Next slide. So we're now at step five, which is about securing senior board buy-in. Um, the board has the power to make change happen, and that's why they're essential to the Safe Space Initiative. They'll need to know the benefits of running Safe Space, what it is, who needs to be involved, and that would be ideally three to five board exco members, what's required and what the next steps would be. So ask them for a decision to run safe space, as well as their agreement to participate, and also to commit to take action on at least one of the key issues that are raised. And then the next slide, please. So when you've got their agreement, step six is all about creating a task and finish group to help you shape, drive, and implement safe space. So aim to create a diverse group. And we recommend that you appoint a chair to help focus and coordinate the group's effort. And it's also a good idea to draft terms of reference so everyone's really clear on the group's responsibilities. And there's a template in the pack for that too. And then we go on to the next slide and we're at step seven of the journey, which is about finding your employee participants. So ideally you'll need about 10 ethnic minority colleagues and you should again consider a representative and diverse group of people. Think about the selection criteria, the process and how to reach them. Um, you'll find an outline of key things they might want to know and messages that you might want to use to engage them in the pack. And when you've selected them, very, very importantly, please remember to signpost them to any additional support. So thank you very much. I'm going to hand you over to Javed and Alex. Thank you, Donna. And um, we'll go into a, a, a small breakout collaboration group in a sec. Um, a couple of questions for Alex before we do that. Um, one of the questions we're often asked is how do you go about getting buy-in from scene leaders and other key stakeholders that are needed for this? It's, it's a key step in the process and so the way the way we did it was to as a first step to be really clear on, on why are we launching this initiative how are we going to do it who do we want to to to, uh, to involve and we drafted a few slides to help us structure our you know, our thoughts and we then used those slides to engage firstly with a sponsor you mentioned it Donna earlier as one of the key steps we engage with the sponsor of the network we agreed to support the initiative. But then we went beyond and engaged with a few other leaders in the organization who we knew were really were allies effectively. Mm -hmm. And we presented the concept to them. So they were also on board. So we had at least three senior leaders on board with the concept. We then presented uh, those slides to the uh, DNI team to get them on board, ensuring that the initiative would fit into the overall DNI agenda and contribute to advance the DNI strategy. 
Um, and after having the securing, after having secured the support of our sponsors and the DNI team, then the next step was to present to the senior leadership team at, uh, at our company. Uh, so we attended one of the one of the team meeting, presented the concept, uh, and asked for participants to uh, to uh, to join you know join the space session. That's how we did it. But the key step was being very clear on on why we are doing it, how we deliver the session, and how it would be a safe 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 environment. Brilliant, thank you. And for the for the audience in in the safe space guide, we do include some suggestions to put in writing to your senior leaders. I guess there's two parts uh, or two key groups of stakeholders. The other, the other group are ethnic minority colleagues who, and I've seen some of the questions in the chat, may be reticent or not wanted to come forward. So how did you get them to engage? Yes, we, we actually decided to engage almost on a one-on-one -on -one basis with some of, our, some of the network members. So it was uh, the co-chair and myself engaged with some of uh, our members. We knew the one that were really active mm -hmm. in the networks, uh, that were that were not afraid to share their views, uh, share some of their experience because it's quite emotional yeah. as well. So not everyone would be comfortable mm. in doing that. So we almost had this targeted approach um, to 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 engage with some of the network members and explain explain the concept you know to them. That was also the opportunity to get some of early feedback on what concerns they might have or what we will what we needed to guarantee. For them to be safe during the session so we use the process as well to get some some insight to ensure uh, everyone would be safe and specifically you know the network uh, network members that was our you know our approach so if we go back to donna now who will take us through to steps eight and nine thank you thanks javid so um Earlier, we mentioned that um, you needed to get a task and finish group in place. So when you have that in place, step eight is all about getting ready. And there are a few things that you need to think about in advance. So Javid mentioned earlier that one mandatory element is having a good facilitator. So look for someone who's going to manage the conversation sensitively and robustly while ensuring that the session is kept on track. Could be someone internal or, if resources permit, an external facilitator. We also recommend that you encourage board members to think about the questions that they want to ask. And remember, it's not just what questions they'll ask, but how they'll ask them. So it's a good idea just to spend some time with them in advance. Um, and it's also important for um, participants to pre prepare in advance of the session as well, so that you get the most um, value out of it as possible. Um, finally, you need to think about things like agendas, running orders and logistics. And again, the resource pack will provide you with more detail and guidance on these things. Um, to help you along the way. So next slide. So we're now on step nine, which is all about running the session. And we've suggested uh, two hours to cover a minimum of three issues. And it's a good idea to have an agenda with timings in advance. Allow time for introductions. Um, the facilitator will keep the conversation on track and ensure that there are fair opportunities for everyone to speak. They'll focus the discussion on the key issues, exploring why there are key issues, what evidence there is for them and what, would, what it would mean if the organization were to take action to address them. Um, remember to summarize the key points and agree next steps during a session. Um, the next steps will depend on your discussion. It could be that you agree to collate more information and evidence, or the board could be ready to discuss the key issues and decide which to take action on straight away. So back to Alex and Javid now. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Um, so picking up on that, Alex, um, we get lots of questions about how to select the right facilitator. So how did you go about choosing your facilitator and how did you brief them? We, we, we had a lot of debates about the facilitator. Should we go external? Should we be internal? Should we be someone from HR or not in HR? Mm. And ultimately, we went with uh, someone that, that was one of the network allies. He was often coming to uh, the network events, even though he was not part of um, any minority group. And um, we also knew he had the skills to facilitate such conversation. So we, we asked him and, um, uh, and, and he, agreed, he agreed to be our facilitator. And he was, we were fortunate because he was the general counsel of the company. So someone quite senior, 
that was able to influence uh, influence people. Um, and I saw earlier in the chat someone asking if it's, it should be someone external. Mm. Um, my personal view is I don't think it has to be, uh, but then considering this person's role in the company is quite important. Mm. Because if it's someone from HR, maybe the participant might be reluctant to you know, fully open up or they might be afraid of uh, how the conversation could stay confidential. Something to consider, even though I think it's too, it could still be someone from, you know, from HR. Brilliant. Thank you, Alex. And in the guide, explain the sort of person that would make a good facilitator. So I think that will help determine whether it's an internal or an external and what department or not they may be. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you for picking up the question that was in the chat. Um, how did you brief all parties um, before the safe space session? Yeah, so we, uh, first of all, we shared uh, in writing the terms of reference of the events and the safety a statement so how how the session will be safe and we ask for some clear commitment from all the participants so we ask them to to sign off those two those two documents and then we arrange two two meetings separate meetings one with the network members mm -hmm. that uh, we're going to to share their experiences and we went through with them the meeting agenda some of the topics we uh, were thinking of covering and we also ask them ask for their input we also share with them some of the questions we are planning to ask. And again, we really ask their views so they had a voice on how the, the session would be, would be run. Um, and then we had a separate meeting with all the leaders to do something similar, going through the agenda, the topics, and also answer any question they have. It's funny enough, the leaders were, were more concerned than the network members that were going to share the experience. Mm. So we use the session to answer some of the question and show they felt you know, safe and, and confident about participating and, and listening to, you know, to their colleagues. So that, that's how we did it. Brilliant. So the question everyone wants to know, what happened during the safe space session? Oh, what happened? Yeah, a lot happened. Um, a lot of emotion uh, when people shared, shared their experiences, emotion, from, from the network members, but also from, from, the, from the leaders. Some of them were almost shocked to hear some of the stories from colleagues. I think it's colleagues they've worked with day to day for, for months or years, they never really realized what those colleagues have been you know, going through. And it's not, not just at work, it's more outside of work. So story from university, from your know, day to day life, that was really impactful. So it was a lot of uh, emotion. Uh, empathy, empathy as well, and, and people really listening and, and taking in all of uh, all of the stories, which then really triggered uh, at the end of the session this focus around. So what what are we going to do next? You know, so what? Now we've heard a lot of stories, but what's what's next for yeah. for the organization and, and for leaders to take action? Brilliant. And, we, and we'll pick on the what next later. Yeah. And, and actually, that's to us, that's the crucial part of safe space. I call it safe space plus. It's not just a conversation. It's what happens next to make it worth its while. I'll hand you back over to Donna, actually, for the final part of the journey. Hello again. So we've now reached um, phase four and step 10. So we're on the home stretch now. So as Javid mentioned, um, a crucial element of safe space is taking action. Um, so the board needs to discuss the key issues that were raised during the session and decide which ones they're going to act on. And we also recommend that safe space participants meet with the board to hear which issues will be addressed. Importantly, ethnic minority colleagues must be involved in the task and finish groups set up to address the key issues. And this is based on feedback from our workshops with ethnic minority employees. And step seven, the, sorry, step 11 even, um, our final step, if we go on to the next slide, is all about monitoring progress, which is critical. So to understand if anything has changed, you need to measure the impact of the actions taken. So we recommend that you review the safe space experience with colleagues, track progress on action and impacts. And finally, do update us on the progress you've made. We would love to feature your organization as a case study. And that's all of the steps covered. There is a lot more detail in the guide, so please do download it. Um, and over to you, Javid.
Thank you very much. I think it's important. I think in the R group, we said um, there's a risk of tokenism, uh, or we've done safe space, and that's it. I think it, it's all about this, you know, action going forward and being transparent with everyone. And I think it it, it does with all organisations. A couple of years ago, making all these statements about you know race equality and that. This is the one time where you can really see are your true leaders really you know, is it part of the business and part of the DNA of the organization? So thank you for that, Donna. Um, so I'd like to ask a final question actually to Alex, which is, I guess, the key part of, you know, you know, there's activity and action, but does it make a difference? So what was the impact of your safe space session and how did you follow up, um, Alex? So the, the impact was a list of actions that we agreed during the meeting and then that we followed up in writing after the session. So actions such as, for the executive to focus a lot more on the recruitment of, so how their direct report were recruiting to ensure by bringing diversity at a, at a senior level. Also to challenge a lot more there, the recruitment agencies to bring a diverse candidate in a pool. And all of those actions and were agreed uh, in conjunction with the DNI team and, you know, and HR. Um, there was also some clear direction to the senior leadership team, so the wider senior leadership team to be more, more vocal, uh, more visible into participating in, in DNI events, in, in, in attending network uh, events as well, to carry on raising you know, their, their awareness. Those steps or easy actions, they were able to, uh, to implement and, and take. Uh, but beyond, oh, and, and a key step that I almost forgot was then the CEO in you know, our staff meeting uh, making a statement on a zero tolerance policy against discrimination, uh, um, linked to then a review of some of the processes uh, and, and policies in place in the company. That was really a key, a key step. But beyond all of those actions, for me, the main difference was how it started to raise awareness and led to a conversation around this was a small group of people before we go further into actions, actually, do we have any data, any evidence on the lived experience of uh, all colleagues in the company? And from there, with the DNI team, we agreed, how could we run some focus groups to go much deeper into the experience of employees? And for me, that was a big, you know, like a big step forward. Because then it enabled as the HR team to really have data on how people felt. And based on that, then more actions could be, could be put in place. Brilliant, thank you. And just for um, 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 the attendees, um, we have um, um, interviewed Alex before where he sh shared some slides on the resources he used and the comms he used. So we will share this with everyone after the event because it's fantastic stuff he, he's used. So again, some of the tools and how he messaging he got across, um, we will share with everyone after the event. So thank you for that. Well, I, I was, I was, we, um, we, we need your help with, um, with some feedback or, or, or on um, my name is in a sec. What I will suggest, because I've seen some people said, things have gone quite quick in today's event. Um, if anyone wanted to stay back for 10 minutes at the end, what we, we, what we will offer you is another chance to go into another breakout group and carry on some conversation if that's suitable for some people, because we appreciate, um, uh, you know, you've got so much to say or, or wanted to share. So we, 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 we will do that. Okay, so, um, so um, one of the solutions, if you can show the slides uh, that you may be aware of, is my name is. It's all about change, helping change the status quo and for us to start getting each other's names right. As you can see on the slide, we created a tool in collaboration with Edelman and Green Park that currently enables people to type in their name. It provides access to a database with suggested phonetic spellings, which you can pick the right one for you. If your spelling is not available phonetically, then you can create your own and then that goes into the database. Unfortunately, due to lack of funding, we're no longer able to have access to this database of phonetic spellings of names. Therefore, the suggestions will no longer show. However, you can still type in your own phonetic spelling as shown in this slide. So you'll type in your name. So like I've done mine there. Um, and as you go across, you can then see uh, it comes with Javid and then um, I can put my photo on there. So um, that's how it will be going forward. So we're wondering whether we bring down the name is tool, so no longer has, no one has access to it, or whether we keep it up, um, appreciating it doesn't provide as many prompts um, as, as it current or previously was able to do. 
So as we mentioned, this is all about collaborating with our community and we want you to help us decide what we do or, or, or don't do. So um, if we could just launch a quick poll, it takes us about 30, 40 seconds. If everyone could just put their thoughts on it, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. So 91% would recommend today's event to others. So huge thank you for everyone's interaction and involvement and really importantly to Alex's inspiring and informative guidance and advice. Thank you, Alex. Question two, in comparison to other diversity inclusion initiatives, how effective would you rate safe space in tackling race inequality? Positively, 66% think more or significantly more effective, which is fantastic. And testament to our ethnic diverse community who co-created it. Only 1% think it's less than effective compared to other initiatives. How helpful was the promo video? Well, 74% say good to excellent. And as we mentioned, we provide you all with a link afterwards. And we know people are using the video to share with their race networks, their ethnic diverse colleagues, plus their senior leaders to engage them or explain safe space. Question four, how helpful was it to hear from my expert, Alex? So 93% of you rated it good to excellent with the majority and very good and excellent and i fully concur thank you again alex we can't do these events without people supporting and being trailblazers like you how helpful was the group discussion and breakouts so 73 percent three quarters of us here today thought between good and excellent we do appreciate that they were a bit rushed but we try to get in so much but we will keep taking your guidance on how to make this opportunity for you to collaborate more with each other but conscious of everyone's time do you think safe space will help tackle race inequality in your organization 66 percent, so two-thirds of us here today think will make an impact a catalyst to significant change in their organization and that's what it's all about is to spark the change and we know from organizations that have implemented it it becomes more than one off and continued progress in tackling race inequality happens. So 65% of you feel fairly to very confident in being able to implement safe space. And uh, we appreciate one in three of you uh, feel confident but need a bit more support. Um, and we will continue to provide that, including through our buddy circles. But do join our guild where you can get support from fellow members of the Race Equality Matters networking community. As we can see here, Nearly 50% are looking to run it within the next four months, uh, with about a third um, in October during Black History Month. And overall, 95% believe they will look to run Safe Space, which is fantastic. As key to it is getting scene leaders involved and it's action driven. And this can be reflected in how easy do you think it will be to get your scene leaders on board with Safe Space? And it's 73% think between fairly easy and very easy, which is fantastic. So here's a tool and resource we can take straight to our senior leaders to move from talking about race to action. And Race Equality Matters is all about meaningful impact. And it's fantastic to see 80% believe that safe space will help their organization take meaningful action, making an impact. So thank you all for filling and contributing to the poll, which we can build our future events on to provide you with the support and resources you need. That's great. So we'll go through some questions. Veronica um, asked Alex, uh, what concerns did senior leaders have prior to taking part and how did they overcome them? Good question. Um, they also wanted to be safe. They were worried, what about if I say the wrong thing? Um, would there be any consequences? So we really focused on it's safe. This is a space where uh, if needed, there would be education as well or no judgment. Uh, it, it would be confidential. They were really worried about, am I going to say the, the wrong thing? Will it have, will it have any impact uh, on how we'll be seen you know, going forward? Um, will it be confidential? So all those type of, of, uh, of questions, but I almost found they were more concerned than uh, again, the, the network members participating because, because, it, because it was so new for them to have yeah. this type of conversation. 
Mm. Again, I don't want to generalize, but at least the group we had for them, it was new. I don't think it's the case for all, you know, all leaders. Yeah. And um, I think that's why the, the prep in advance is helpful again you know for them to write the questions they want to do and then actually be helped with the wording so uh, and both both sides and and there is a sort of like, um you know um let's know in advance it might get emotional so uh, they're prepared for that and actually uh, and i think important not to get defensive um because otherwise that that'll shut down 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 the chat um but organization every organization we know that's run this you know it's it's been very productive uh, as, as alex has been emotional but at the end of it it's been very productive and some organization have run them every six months and building on the back of it um nicholas um asked are safe spaces um you know uh in real life or online uh, and has anyone tried to uh, global safe space bring experience of people who live and work overseas we did it online that was during the pandemic yeah uh, so it was all online which actually helped facilitate the process but i think face to face could be even more more powerful mm. but probably a bit more logistic to to plan for and and, uh, and coordinate yeah i agree I, I think um in real life is easy to especially see how people are thinking and feeling mm. um in, in, in that sense but i think to be more inclusive um a virtual it can be better because you can have people from all over the country or if you're an international com company or on that side i think some people also feel it um, more comfortable that actually if they're struggling during a meeting they can sort of turn their camera off and have a little break uh which they might find a bit more comfortable okay uh next question um uh, is it important to have a dni strategy before starting safe space oh uh, good question we, for us, regardless of the strategy, so we made it, we ensured it was aligned with the strategy, but even though there was, let's say if we had no strategy in place, for us it was still relevant to, I want to, we wanted to amplify the voices of the communities, ensure they reach the top of the organization, raise awareness with you know, the senior leaders. So I don't think, again, my point of view is you don't really need a DNA strategy to do that. It's more about let's normalize the conversation and engage leaders so they become more comfortable with those uncomfortable conversations. Yeah, br brilliant. Thank you. Uh, I, I jump to the question, uh, Lubna. Um, you can go on our website, Race Quality Matters, and you can find more information on my name is. Um, uh, it's moving here. Is it I got, it says Sammy, I think it's abbreviated it. Um, were there any concerns from senior leadership that they would not be able to fully address and deal with some of the issues raised? Um, we we had those concerns as well to say actually even if we're really action orientated there was so much emotion and we knew there would be emotion that the meeting might not actually be the best place to discuss actions maybe we need to take a step back digest and then review some of those actions later on in a follow-up meeting so which we had a small follow-up meeting with the with the leaders to get their thoughts when they had time to reflect which i think was actually uh, is a good way to to get more meaningful actions. Um, and back to my example earlier, I think you can have some action in the moment, but do they really address the, the challenges in place or are they going to be just generic actions? So when we later reflected on the conversation and engaged the DNI team, that's when we agreed to do those focus group, mm. which for me really was a more meaningful action that would drive long-term changes because then the organization had a better experience of uh, of the live experience oh, so better understanding of the live experience of employee yeah brilliant thank you i've, I've seen some people put in, the, in the chat that their organization may not be ready or it might be difficult time uh, another thing we have um correct and that's why another solution we've got is tea break and, it, and for some organization it's run a few tea breaks first it's more for a wider um mm. uh number of your organization and then you might be ready for safe space but we have also had some organizations run safe space and then on the back of it they've run tea breaks um etc i think i'm going back to the last question i think it's important to not saying the senior leadership will tackle every problem brought to the table on that on that day it's it's a start and it's you know if they're taking action it's it's the first time most organizations have taken meaningful action but it's not what they've decided or hr decided or anyone else that it's actually this has been brought together by you know ethnic diverse colleagues or the race network you know this is what we want to talk about and if that and you bring in the most meaningful stuff so i think um you know um look at tea break look at safe space uh, and, and that, that can help 
Um, so, so thank you very much for Alex. As I said, we, we, we'll, just, we'll just wrap up now, let you know about a couple of things in the pipeline. But if, if a few people want to stay behind for 10 minutes to go into little breakout groups, we will, we will enable that to happen. Um, so um, in, in the pipeline, a couple of other events we've got coming up is um, get ready for Black History Month. Um, so we can um, you know, share ideas and thoughts of um, what we might want to do um, as an organization for Black History Month. Um, it's a good chance to network and collaborate there. And then after the summer break, uh, we've got uh, uh, Get Ready for Race Equality Week 2023. So five months to go. Again, we'll share tips, ideas, and thoughts like that, but another chance to collaborate uh, with, with each other. So thank you for that. Um, um, as mentioned in the beginning, um, we have two brand initiatives in the high, in, 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 on the horizon. One is the Trailblazers. So as you know, Race Equality Matters is aims to turn declarations of commitment and talk and support from organization individuals into meaningful action. We also want to recognize organizations and individuals that are making meaningful change. So we've launched um, our Trailblazer accreditation, accreditation mark soon, apologize for my uh, language here. Um, it will signal an organization's commitment to taking action on race inequality and making an impact. There will be two types of Trailblazer status. The first you can see is um, if you've run a race equality matter solution. So um, Alex's um, previous organization could apply for that. Uh, and the next one is um, four stages, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. You, you come up bronze level, uh, you achieve it, and then you've got a period of time to get to the next level. This is all about not just getting win the award and living off it forever. It's actually to keep the momentum going. You know, it, um, you know it's to up, up, up the grades, um, et cetera. Um, next slide. How it works, organizations submit application forms via an online form to address key criteria that ethnic, um, um, diverse people from across the country said is crucial. Each application will be reviewed and scored by independent panel members, all who have lived experience of race, um, uh, of race inequality. So it's across the country. It's not race quality matters. It's, it's, a, it's a group of in independent panelists. The panel will decide which organizations are making genuine and impactful roads into tackle race inequality and therefore deserve the Trailblazer accreditation mark. We've spoken to quite a lot of people aged from 14 to 50 who said if an organization had this Trailblazer status, it would be attractive for them to consider working for their organizations. So if your organization is interested in being involved, then do let us know. Uh, each entry will receive feedback, so we'll explain why you've made the um, uh, um, um, trailblazer status or why not, so you can build on the findings. Next slide, please. We also have just about to launch, hopefully this week, uh, our, a jobs board. The purpose to help organisations attract a more diverse talent pool. It will also help you see which organisations are committed on recruiting a greater por portion of ethnic minority talent. Um, so watch out for this in the next day or so. Um, next slide, please. So a huge thank you to um, our partners and sponsors. As I said, um, they're, we're not for profit. We need their support and anyone else that can support us. That'd be fantastic. And a huge thank you to Alex, who was um, awesome and inspiring again today. Um, I'll, I'll learn from Alex every time. As I said, we've recorded today's event, so you'll be able to see um, uh, and share with your colleagues um, the great insights Alex shared. Plus, we will share his slides and previous interview we did with him. Here's our handles and other ways you can keep in touch with us. So thank you for that. Um, and remember, it's about action, not just words.